Redditors who have hired a private investigator what did you find out? One of my jobs is to search for long lost relatives, usually several generations ago. Typically, the case is about old plots of land where I should track down owners, or their heirs, to update the land registry because a state wants to build their something. Let me tell you, the amount of information you can find on Google and in public records is astounding if you know where to look. I had a girlfriend that worked for one for a while. She said that the majority of their work was insurance scams. She took a lot of pictures of guys who said they were hurt on the job playing golf and surfing and such. I know someone that hired a pet detective to find their cat and he effin found him. My little brother hired one to find his dog. He was living in LA, and his complex let the dog out on accident. Small dogs some mutt of toy breeds. He looked on his own for two weeks and was devastated. My folks found this guy in Indiana who was like $3k to hire but he guaranteed he'd find the dog or he wouldn't get paid. My folks and I chipped in as my brother couldn't afford that. The guy found my brother's dog inside of a day. She was wild. My story is a little different. I had a pie investigate me. About 6 years ago I became very ill with a variety of issues. That left me really quite poorly. I was an optician and so using my hands with arthritis was just never going to be a plan. So I applied for, UK, disability support, I sailed through, and started receiving a monthly amount, now, fast forward a few years, I then start getting restless at home so I retrain into a job that doesn't involve my hands, I stop receiving money, except for the benefit you can get while you work, I use it for paying a better automatic car off, well, my very nasty mother's friend saw me start work and called the benefits office, assuming I was still claiming, unfortunately, she exaggerated and told them I was living a normal life and even running daily, so the benefits office filmed and watched me, they thought they had an aha, gotcha, moment, their pie provided photos of me walking and aided, when I sat in the meeting, with a lot of smug fraud officers and my solicitor I felt sick to my stomach, I really couldn't work out WTF was going on, they were trying to make it look like I had been running and jogging but I knew I walked never any further than 5 meters to my car, anyway, solicitor pointed out the photos were screenshots of a video, asked for the videos, videos were of me, struggling to walk, one of them I rest on my car before opening my door. Another I was going into a supermarket and had replaced my cane with a trolley to lean on. You get the picture. So, the fraud team basically said oops and I never heard from them again. I spend a lot of my time trying to appear normal and it bit me in the ass. And never trust these fraud TV shows now either. Even in 2020 I struggle to picture a private investigator as anything but a man in a beige trench coat and a trilby. Not me. But a friend hired one because he was suspicious his stepdad was being unfaithful to his mom. So, he asked me, and I put him in contact with a guy I knew. Bit of a backstory, the stepdad is 5 minutes, and 10 seconds, 160-ish pounds. My friend is 6 feet 2 inches to 135 pounds, ripped, at 15. When my friend's mom and stepdad started dating, my friend gave her the typical you hurt her, you're dead speech. Also his bio dad walked out on him and his sister when my friend was like 4. It took a while, but my friend warmed up to the guy and he's a good guy. Took my friend and I to an 49 airs game once which was pretty cool. Anyways, the pie said he wasn't cheating. Apparently there was a house on the market that my friend's mom wanted, and he bought it. He had been remodeling it for some time and he kept it a secret, as a 5 year anniversary gift to her. He bought it. Anyways, they live in a 5 bed house now. I was a private investigator for a little bit. Most work pies do is searching financial court records and serving documents. But one time I was paid by wealthy parents to stake out their college senior who had stopped returning their calls. They were worried about her. These parents paid like $40k for round the clock monitoring just to find out their daughter dropped out of school and was a full time ski bum. BTW stakeouts are mostly just sitting in your car reading all day. My dad hired a pie in the mid 90s in Eastern Europe to find out if one of his business partners was stealing from him. Instead he found out his own brother was stealing from him. He refused to believe the pie and his brother robbed him blind took a huge amount of money and left him with gigantic debt, he still forgave him. Had a babysitter we thought was stealing from us, 
Luckily our neighbor was a pie couple and they ran a background check for $10. Babysitter had a string of DUIs and a few days before a large fine was due, my camera disappeared. He also stole money from my kids piggy banks. He sort of disappeared but was also really into Instagram so I surreptitiously followed him. He started babysitting again for a single mom, easy target, and posted a lot of fun pics with this family. I tracked down the mom and sent her a long email detailing out his whole scam. She said we were right and it was clear he'd been stealing from her business. He has since gone underground but I still google him regularly to see what he's up to. He's been able to avoid arrests for a while now. My law firm had a bad faith insurance case several years ago. A guy had gotten hurt at work. He claimed he was disabled because he hurt his back and could not lift anything or really engage in any type of physical activity. His disability insurance carrier failed to handle the claim and pay him what was owed. There was a potential for relatively large damages. In fact, the carrier filed in the court case what is known as an offer to confess judgment. It's a way of agreeing to let judgment be taken for that amount. The plaintiff can accept the offer or reject it. However, if he rejects the offer he is responsible for the defendant's attorney's fees if the verdict ends up being less than the amount of the offer to confess judgment. The offer in this case was 750,000.00. He rejected the offer. A few weeks later our pie found out that the plaintiff bowled every week. The pie got video of the plaintiff bowling and copies of his score sheets going several years back through the date of the accident. It was clear he really was not disabled. He also found that plaintiff had been in a car wreck and was making identical injury claims to the other driver's insurance carrier. We filed a motion with the court to dismiss the lawsuit based upon fraud and perjury. The court set the motion for a hearing. But before that happened the plaintiff dismissed his lawsuit. My parents hired a private investigator to find out who my online BF was when I was 13. The pie came back and told us he was just a fat A13 yo. Umfeo. When I was 14 my parents suspected that the woman I was talking to was much older than she said. I'd spoken to her brother and sister so I was confident she was who she said she was. I became friends with her older brother. I wish my parents had hired a pie based on their suspicions. Her older brother was her son. Her sister her daughter. The pictures she sent me were of her daughter. I was in my 20s before I found out. My sister, mid 30s, is adopted and hired one to find her estranged biological father. They came back saying that not only was he still alive and nearby, but he had a daughter, meaning she also had a biological sibling. Further digging from the pie uncovered that they weren't just similar ages either, they were exactly the same age. The evidence suggested that my sister had a twin and her birth father had taken the twin and vanished. Huge, life changing news, eventually. Through more incredible detective work, the pie realized that the daughter was actually just my sister. There was no other sibling and they had just been investigating my sister the whole time accidentally. Needless to say, we asked for the money back. TL. DR. Sister hired a private investigator. Private investigator accidentally investigated sister. My grandmother's first boyfriend after my grandfather died said he was a retired cop and a veteran. They enjoyed dancing to country music together, and bought a new car, in her name though, even though she can't drive anymore. My uncle's hired a pie, turns out, that old bastard had a habit of shacking up with widows and bleeding them dry. The boyfriend not the pie, not me but my friend, also a lawyer like myself, was handling a contested will, normally, very very straightforward, anyway, woman and her mid 30s husband just died. He was in his late 70s or early 80s, can't remember. Still nothing fishy because hey, nothing wrong with an adult transaction where a very good looking young woman sleeps with a rich old man in exchange for the use of his credit cards. Here's where it gets slightly concerning. Two months before his death, he rewrote his will and left everything to her instead of his 5 kids, around 35m in cash and assets, and then it gets downright thriller movie-ish, turns out. The woman is a 5 time widow, now you may be saying, sure, that could just be the unluckiest, most pitiful widow in the world, but it gets even fishier, in all 5 of her marriages, the wills were rewritten just months before their deaths, and every cause of death was natural causes despite not all of them being as old as the latest husband, and toxicology tests were not carried out during any of the 5 autopsies, but wait, there's more. 
It turned out that the widow was never home during any of the deaths, yet insisted the autopsies were carried out at the same institute. But wait, still more. Widow is also distantly related to one of the higher ups at the institute. Hadn't heard from my mom since I was about 15. Very unstable due to drugs and alcohol etc. When I was 29 I decided it was time to find out what happened to her. I figured if she was a Jane Doe somewhere then I could put her to rest. And if she was alive then I wanted to let her know that I forgave her. Hired a pie to help. I guess she was moved by my story and so she also ran info for the man my mother was apparently married to. On the house. And with one clue from his report I was able to track them down. I wouldn't have found my mom alive and was just starting out on recovery after being homeless and addicted for many many years if it wasn't for the pie who kindly ran an extra report for free mom has remained sober now for about seven years and is probably the healthiest she's ever been physically and emotionally i know somebody who was like an assistant to the actual pie she basically went to bingo with a camera in her purse to capture video of a woman the woman claimed that a car accident had completely immobilized her but she would take off the neck brace all the time, playing bingo hours on end. Nothing exciting, just capturing fraud. Not me but my grandfather did. He was separated from his brother when the Japanese occupied China. My grandfather safely made it to Hong Kong and eventually to Canada. His brother made it to Singapore or Malaysia according to family friends back then. So my grandfather spent a good 5 years or so working with the Pi to find his brother so they can be reunited. Sadly, with just a picture and the fact many people died in the war, it wasn't much to go on. My grandfather is still alive and always thinks of his brother, it's his wish to see him one more time. My mother's dad walked out on mom, my aunt, and my grandmother when mom was just 5. A few years later, my grandmother died of a grand mal seizure, mom was taken in by her grandparents, but she always wondered why her dad left and what became of him. In her 40s, she saved up a bit and hired a pie to track him down. Turns out he moved over time from Pittsburgh to California where he wound up in prison for armed robbery and so he other violent crimes. He died in San Quentin Penitentiary. I think mom got a lot of closure out of that. She was able to see that life would have most likely been even worse had he stayed, at least living with her grandparents. She was loved and raised to fulfill her potential. On the other end of the pie spectrum, I was in a bad car accident 13 years ago. I was rear-ended at a red light by a lady going 45. Most of my injuries were soft tissue damage minus the TMJ. Fast forward 8 years. Finally had my court day to see if I'd get $90k in damages. They show camera footage from 4 years prior covering 3 whopping days of me pushing a grocery cart. Carrying groceries and talking on the phone. Apparently that's enough to determine that you're fine. Present day. Every morning my hands go numb. It takes 3 days to clean one room. I can't braid my hair. Various other numerous tasks that take me way longer than any other normal 41 year old. Sometimes you have to do things because you still want to feel normal. Not like you're a 90 year old woman. When I met my wife, she seemed to have a normal modern family. Two moms, two dads. Over time it became apparent her stepdad wasn't around much. Holidays, birthdays, you name it. He'd pop in to say hi, grab a nap, whatever, then take off again. My wife's family thought this was normal, just the way it had always been since they were teenagers. He claimed to have a job following FedEx trucks around the state to prevent theft and drug trafficking. But I thought it strange and started making jokes about him having another family. Well, I guess it got my sister-in-law thinking because she gets a favor from the Piata law firm. Sure enough, he has not to but three wives around the state, and five other, step, children between them. My sister-in-law breaks the news to her mother who immediately changes the locks and files for divorce. They never speak again. Cold turkey. Divorce is even uncontested. As a refu they also send the report to his other wives. I used to work for an insurance defense firm years ago. Best pie story I have is where we hired one to tail a guy who was suing our client for an injury that wasn't entirely our client's fault. The guy was refusing to settle and was insisting on going to trial even though we offered a fair sum that would have paid his medical bills. The pie we hired got some good pics that showed the plaintiff was nowhere near as injured as he claimed. 
but the crown jewel of the photos was one where the guy was walking on a pier with a woman who wasn't his wife, had his hand on her A and everything, later in a deposition, the attorney slid the picture to the plaintiff and said something like Mr. Smith, obviously not his real name, who is the woman in this picture, we would like to schedule a deposition with her as well, the guy went ghost white and told his attorney he wanted to settle. At least he was smart enough to realize that if his wife found out the other woman was gonna be deposed, he was gonna have to get a family law attorney as well, because the divorce papers would soon follow. My boyfriend's family hired a pie to do some covert genealogy, because they are white but all have thick wiry hair that only black hairdressers can handle, and because there are things older folks in these parts just don't talk about. Turns out there's a fair amount of lumbi Indian. A community founded by disenfranchised Native Americans and escaped slaves back in the day, in boyfriend's family, which explains the hair. My wife and I are friends with a lot of bar owners and bartenders because of her job. We knew this one owner tender, we will call him Dana. That was the nicest effing guy, like, if he knew you were sick, he would cover your shift at your bar and then give you the tips he made that night. Just the best guy. Then one night we are drinking with another bartender friend. Ben. Ben lets us know that Dana has brain cancer, he's been keeping it quiet, but Ben has been giving him money, upwards of $5,000, for treatment. My wife and I were about to give money to Ben to pass on, then Dana's business partner got suspicious and hired a pie to follow Dana on a day he took off for medical reasons. Turned out Dana spent the day drinking at another bar, no doctor visits, the business partner confront Dana who comes clean. He did not have cancer, he was just saying that to get money from his friends. Apparently lots of bartenders had been giving him money. Dana is more or less run out of town. He moved to a different city, and I know he slowly paid Ben back, but it took a couple years. I'm not sure what happens to him since. I was the recipient of a pie. I came home from work one day and my BF asked to have my engagement ring as he wanted to take it to be professionally cleaned. The second he handed it over he accused me of cheating on him. The conversation went back and forth for ages. I was beside myself. I couldn't believe what he was saying and he would not believe I was innocent. He then told me he'd had me followed for 6 weeks by a pie who had seen me get into a red mini. It was a girl I knew giving me a lift to work but he would not believe me. I knew then it was over and packed my things and left. I told him to get in touch with the pie and have another look at this so called evidence that I was cheating. An hour later he turns up at where I was staying begging to have me back. He'd realized his mistake. There was no way I was going to get back with someone who would behave that way though so we parted ways. My mom's best friend. She divorced her husband and was awarded full custody of their daughter. His family was a show. He kidnapped his daughter, and he and his parents just disappeared. This was easier in 1977 than it is now. She tried hiring a pie, but couldn't afford one. So she started learning how to trace people on her own. In the days before the internet, she spent years doing this whenever she wasn't waitressing. She did find her daughter in 1981. But by this time her daughter was poisoned against her. Mom's friend went on to get a pie license, and was a pie specializing in women's issues for the next two decades. I don't know what happened to her after that. If she's alive, she would be in her 80s I think. In his 20s, my so hired a pie to find out what had become of the childhood bully who had made his life hell, and who had vowed to kill him. Actually, he did try by bringing a loaded gun to school. But some other kid ratted him out the bully got expelled but still lived in the neighborhood for a few more years beat up my so every chance he got. The pie found the bully living in a town more than an hour outside the big city. In a dead end job. He'd been arrested for assault and public drunkenness a couple times. That info helped my so get past his fear that the guy would find him someday make good on his threat. My good friend was only raised by her mom growing up who would always tell her that her father had walked out on them when she was a baby and that he had never wanted anything to do with her. My friend took it really hard and struggled through her entire childhood believing in that. But then a couple of years ago she hired a private investigator to see if they could find him again. Well, they did. And it turned out what her mother told her was a lie. Her dad is seriously one of the sweetest SND soft hearted guys I've ever met. He left because my friend's mom forced him out when he uncovered her infidelity. I guess he wasn't actually her dad, because her mom cheated on him while they were together. 
but he loved her like she was his own and has only avoided contacting her because her mom convinced him he legally has no rights to her child and, even worse, she threatened to accuse him of molesting my friend when she was a baby if he reached out anyway. Thankfully my friend is an adult now and has moved out from her mom's house, and she can have the relationship with her dad that she always wanted. It just sucks that she had to go through the effort of hiring a pie to achieve that. My work requires us to hire pies to investigate injury claims. We had this high schooler claiming a head injury so severe that he basically couldn't live a normal life specifically. He had an issue with bright lights, couldn't stare at a computer or TV long etc. Our pie caught him on several occasions at the movies, arcade, basketball games, etc. So basically he was making a fraudulent claim. Not mine specifically, but my mother hired one to spy on the school. See, my little brother is dyslexic and has severe social anxiety, and so was struggling a lot in a public school setting. He had an IEP, which the teachers and principal were insisting was being followed, but every day my brother would come home in tears shaking because he felt abandoned and stupid, so mom hired the investigator. And sure enough the teachers were basically just ignoring my brother, they'd sit him in the back of the room and demand he do his work, then wouldn't help him through it, then they'd yell at him because he didn't do it, again, he couldn't write because of the dyslexia, with all the evidence, my mom was able to arrange a meeting with the school board and threatened to sue, they agreed to pay his tuition for a private school that was supposed to help, it didn't, and mom ended up just pulling him out and homeschooling him. He's been doing a lot better. My uncle was a private investigator. In high school my friends and I were getting flashed by a guy constantly. He would do thing like iron while naked at his window every time the bus dropped us off. I hated it so told my uncle who was very concerned this guy's behavior would escalate. So he started filming him doing it. Then went on a local news program to discuss it and the guy moved out the next day ha. Huh? My dad was cheating on my mom with two different old men. Both of them don't know about the other one. He says he isn't gay or anything. He's doing it for the money. He told us that he's in their wills and everything and that they're just friends. I don't believe it. How do you end up in a friend's will? There's definitely something else going on but he won't admit it. My mom calls him El Buter as a code word for him. It means the vulture in Spanish. Not me, but my dad. My mom's a hoe. I could have told him myself, but I didn't want to hurt his feelings and he wanted hard evidence anyway. Eater, if I remember right, it was five different guys at one time. One might have been the meth dealer, but he might have come later. It's been a while and there was a lot to keep up with. Pi was like I'm sorry, you really got your money's worth. I had his back twice by telling the guys that she was married and that we all still live together. Pretty entertaining breakups were my immediate reward. Not having to go with her to watch her date guys behind my dad's back was my long term reward. Turns out, dad doesn't have any bio children. I never hired one, but, my husband is a private investigator and owns a pie business. I have also helped with some surveillance, so, very often, you do not find anything, there isn't anything to find. You have clients wanting to catch their spouses cheating, but they really aren't doing anything. Sometimes, you realize that the client is mentally ill and very paranoid, so we can hook up cameras in the house, but no one is really moving the furniture around or stealing. I will tell you that if my husband really believes it's mental illness, he will not take the job or will seize the job once this is suspected. They need a psychiatrist not a pie and he's not cool with taking money from those people. He worked on a pretty high profile murder case. It involved several murders over a few years. My husband obviously knew a lot of inside stuff that never made it into the news. He found out a lot of interesting stuff there. He would read the web sleuths forum about the case and laugh at the um chair detectives. 